Hi there. In showing up today to share together, I wanted to also invite you to do a personal reflection exercise that has to do with the topic of joy. And even though joy sounds light and lively, it actually can be something that we uh, overstep. We forget to notice and appreciate the moments of joy because often, especially in these times, we're problem solving, we are adapting to change, and uh, our bodies tend to maybe tense up and be more reactive and maybe less appreciative of what's happening in the moment. So when I was studying mindfulness and social emotional learning and a lot of leadership applications, I worked with Parker Palmer, who founded the Courage to Teach. He wrote Courage to Teach and also the Courage to Lead program. And Parker often had this this way of bringing people together and greeting them in a, in a group. He would say, um, that joy is actually something that we can convert into positive energy to make active change. And he's someone who has been a, um, a leader in the world of change and actually looking for um, both global change and also on a local level, uh, how can we come together and, and be positive forces in the world? So thinking about social justice, about all action, um, that action usually springs from what would be your wellspring of both energy and also um, a notion of hope and keeping a dream alive. So uh, the positives are definitely important to keep in mind as we face a world that is so challenging, complex, and can be really daunting and, and frankly, um, it can it can bring us down. So, so Parker will also say uh, it's important to have both the gravity and the levity. So as we have our our missions and our and our purpose and our values that are driving it, I wanted to invite you right now to just reflect. And it can be by taking a few mindful breaths. I'm going to ask a question, and I would love if you if you had a pen or. Uh, a notebook that might be in front of you. Maybe you could sketch some ideas there or feel free if you want to type answers. Um, and these aren't really answers. I shouldn't say it that way. They're, they're responses. They're, they're reflections. And in the moment, whatever moves you could be wanting to voice itself on the page, which is why when I use mindful journaling, I tend to start with handwriting because there's a flow there and there's also less likelihood of me uh, flipping to another tab or checking my spelling or starting to go down a rabbit hole of a research question that leads me to another website. So I share that because uh, in this process of reflection, it can be a surprising journey and I would love for these, these discussions to be very open where you feel a sense of curiosity about what's developing in your own mind and, and your thoughts. So this is a, a question that's very open-ended, but Parker Palmer would often introduce it to our leadership circle as we were meeting for the first time. So as I ask you this, feel free to spill out whatever's in your mind. And the question is, what makes you come alive? What makes you come alive? And take it in any direction you want. It could be alive in terms of vitality. What makes you come alive and making you feel a greater sense of connection? It can be a routine or something that is part of every day for you, or it could be an activity, it could be anything. So really when I when I ask the question, what what makes you come alive? It's a it's a very personal question. And feel free to answer it in the way that calls out to you. Uh, and as a as a time invitation to create some constraint here, let's say Let's say go for two minutes. So two minutes right now, just 
just breathing and being in the shared space and writing down what makes you come alive. Ready? Begin. have 30 seconds left. As you Come down to the last 10 seconds. See if you can form a way of closing your piece about what makes you come alive. And if you have more to share and you want to go into more detail, you can always come back to this exercise on your own time, spend more time with it, really, really let ideas bubble up that, that happen. Uh, but in the moment, it's wonderful to endorse this and also use that creative constraint as a boundary. So right now, with whatever comes up in the moment, and I've, I've been doing this too, every time I invite an exercise, I, I participate in it and uh, enjoy what's coming up in my, my head and my heart at the same time. So what I would suggest is just taking time to attend and to attend to your thoughts, not to evaluate, but to use that practice of mindful attention to invite an awareness and a curiosity and even um, a sense of allowing, allowing anything to drop in in the moment. Um, so just as we said before, uh, mindfulness, that, that spirit of presence and awareness on purpose without judgment. So for me, if I'm, if I'm in a group, I'll often uh, invite people to share what makes them come alive and and have um, a group sharing where each person's invited to bring that to the circle. And as Parker has said before, it's a, it's a way of us showing up and arriving with each other and, and listening to each other and, and what we have to share about what brings us a sense of coming to life. So just for us today, I would share what makes me come alive feeling a part of nature, not separated, but integral, from that sense of belonging and coming alive, there's an inner knowing that emerges, extending outward, converting into action. My aliveness feels like joy. It came out on the page looking like this, just very open with the script. And if I were keeping a an online journal or some digital copy, I might take a picture of it and then put the picture as a, as a screenshot that would be up on that page. So just sharing that idea with you as a way to capture a moment that is unscripted, natural, and an invitation for some mindful journaling to help inform your practice and your presence. Thank you.